Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Dun, 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 dun. What is going on, guys? How is everybody doing today? Welcome to another se- episode, not se- episode, episode, episode of uh, Cruising the Planets. We are here with Randon, the man. What's up? We are here with Jesse. She, yeah. don't, she doesn't have oh, a nickname. My bad. <laughs> Jesse, the spaghetti Jesse, and we are with oh, yeah. the one and only. The man, the myth, the legend, Drew Myers. You got to stop doing that, man. <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate it. I had to hype you up. You're uh, the guest. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. For sure. So, guys, today we are doing something different. Um, we're actually going to be creating a bucket list. And Drew, um, if I'm not mistaken, you do a seminar on making bucket list. If you wanted to go ahead and explain how that works. Yeah, absolutely. I do public speaking. And my main keynote is make the important things important, starting with you. And yeah. one of the mm. things you can do to make yourself a priority is put your goals, dreams and aspirations in the spotlight and making a life list. I call it a life list. And we'll talk about that in just Ooh, a minute. If you make a life list, that's one way to do that. And the reason why I call it a life list real quick. It's a lot like a bucket list. We're putting an emphasis on the life, not the death, right? Yeah. The definition of a bucket list are things you want to do before you kick the bucket. Mm. Okay. We all, but we all think we're going to live forever, so we never do those things. Mm. And a life list also includes little things. When you say bucket list, it's like big ticket items. Yeah. A life list includes little things. Like the first life list I ever made was eat a double scoop of ice cream and eat lobster. They were on my list of things to do. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. I'd never that's, done those things for whatever simple. reason. Nice. And guys, if you don't know, also, uh, we I learned this yesterday. Drew is just a mysterious man. He uh, he was actually has his own TEDx talk. So if you look up Drew Myers' TEDx talk, you can see his TED talk. And it's exactly what he just said. Make the important things important. That's the the title of it, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so actually, cool. Travis, make the important things important starting with Starting you. with you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's about self-care, self-love, self-protection. Okay, mm-hmm. we're... I like that. That's how it's supposed to be. I love that. I love that so much. Such a mysterious man, Drew Myers, guys. <laughs> I'm actually an open book, really. I'll, there's no mystery to me yeah. at all. It's full transparency. So, so, so what made you want to start doing this? Um, funny story. When I was in high school, a buddy of mine was a DJ. Like he would mm-hmm. go and do like high school dances and things like that. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. And he brought his equipment over <clears> to my house <throat> one time and just set it up in the living room. Huh. And he went home and left all of his equipment there. He told me how to turn it on. So I turned it on, and I started doing my own radio show. I was like, Drew in the morning, cool. boop, boop. You know, I had yeah. this thing. <laughs> cool. And, um, yeah, it was awesome, and I really loved it. Now, I got away from that when I went to school. I went to college at Midwestern State, and I was going to be a journalism guy. I thought I was going to write for Sports Illustrated. But after a long journey of having 11 jobs in 11 years and Dang. selling real estate, they moved a radio station to Glenrose. Mm-hmm. where I live now and um, fell in love with it again. And that kind of got everything rolling from my speaking, my coaching, my podcast and everything. So mm-hmm. it's been pretty awesome. It's been a hell of a ride. That's and that's cool. all, that's been within the last eight years. That's oh, very wow. interesting. Very that's nice. Cool. Very nice, man. So, um, you know, before we get into this bucket list making or hey, this, man, no, this life list, there making, you go. My life fault. List, <laughs> life list. <track. laughs> he was for the correct me. I corrected myself. There you go. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, you said you 11 jobs, 11 years. Tell us a little bit more about your background, about your background before we, you know, get into this. Yeah, sure. I grew up in South Dallas and Duncanville to be exact. Went to school at Midwestern state, which is actually a rival of Tarleton or was a big rival when Mm -hmm. I was in school. And after I graduated, um, my dad told me if you're not happy with what you're doing, go do something else. So I wrapped both of my arms around that concept and squeezed real, real tight. Um, (laughs) I was everything from a journalism guy, worked at a couple of newspapers, I went back to Midwestern. I worked in the admissions office there. Then I decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to be a football coach. Went down to Blinn College, coached a little football. Then I got an opportunity at TCU, Go Frogs. I worked Mm -hmm. uh, on Coach Patterson's staff there, worked my way up into athletic administration. Mm -hmm. Quit that job, started my own business. That business failed, Then I worked my way back into the real world. And I did everything from working for an ad agency. I worked for an oil and gas company doing marketing for them. And then, like I said, the last quote-unquote real job that I had before I got into radio was I sold real estate. Cool. Yeah. I thought, ah, this is what I'm supposed to do. My family was long-time real estate. My grandfather was big-time real estate in Dallas-Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. My dad was a broker, and I was like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, and I hated it. Yeah. Really? I love this, man. Give me a mic. Let's go. So yeah. When so, you guys were like, hey, do you want to come on Cruising the Planet? I was like, uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> why did it take you five weeks to ask me? Yeah. <laughs> my fault, man. <laughs> it's my fault. Well, so, so why did you hate um, like a lot of the other jobs you did? I didn't hate all the other jobs. I, I got bored with them. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. I, felt maybe unappreciated. 
um, new opportunities presented themselves a lot of times. Like, hey, do you want to come do this instead? I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's go do that. In regards to real estate, what I hated about it, I loved helping people buy and sell houses. I didn't like the fact it all revolved around money. Real greedy. Uh, yeah. Everybody, yeah. everybody had their hand out, and I didn't like that. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of a lot of cutting throats in that business. No, not necessarily. But everybody's looking to make a buck or save a buck. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, for me, it's never been about the money. Money has never been a motivating factor to me. I just want to help people, and yeah, that's what I do now with my coaching and my awesome. speaking, and even this working here at the radio station is is helping people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweet. So, uh, I have never made a bucket list. It's something I want to do. A, a life list. A <clears throat> yeah. It's something I want to do my whole life. I've never done it, which is like... Let me ask you, why not? I I just haven't sat down and done it. It's just like, I, I always make like a goal for the year, right? Or or some of that sort, and like two goals under it, or something like that. New year, new me. And, <laughs> you know, I've never made, though, a life list. I feel like a life list is, is the first thing you should do because you can surround your yearly goals around that life list. You know Absolutely, what I mean? Yes. So, so like out Randa, here. have you ever like made like maybe in like elementary school, middle school? You too, Jesse. Have y'all ever made a life list like in school or anything like that? I I haven't. Jesse. Me neither. Mm-hmm. Okay, well let me ask you this: Have you ever said or thought, man, I'm gonna add that to my bucket list? You well, know? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, everybody like, has, right? Yeah, yeah but you I have don't. One. <laughs> I don't really think of it as like a. I need to add it to my list. I'm like, oh, I would love to do that someday, but I don't really think of it. You as Forget like about a it, huh? List, yeah. Right, same same list. same thing, right? Yeah. Um, so many people think that, say that, and I've, I've interviewed, oh, hundreds of people about this, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are on the same camp you guys are. No, I don't have a list. And then we just start to talk, and then they're like, oh, yeah, I do want to do that, or yeah, I do want to do this. And mm-hmm. once you start that conversation, but Travis, you're right. It's about stopping for half a second. It's about clearing the mechanisms, yeah. turning your yeah. phone off, turning the TV off, turning the music off. I'm like, what do I really want to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Facts. I feel like that's so hard nowadays. Cause oh, yeah. Oh, there's so much noise, man. Everyone is on their phones all the time. Like, it's so bad to the point, like, where you're scrolling on TikTok and you'll come across a video with two videos playing on the one video. So you oh, yeah. Go back <laughs> like, it's a little ad. They're yeah. just decorating cookies. And it's cookies. like our, our attention spans are so low nowadays. We're, like, worse than goldfish. And they have, like, a three-second <laughs> attention span. And it's so that serotonin, actually, man. Like, that's why it's so hard Every second, for, for you people. want that now. Serotonin, dopamine, that's what <clears throat> TikTok is. It's so like, much noise in the world. Yeah. yeah. And Sucks. if nothing else, creating a life list is is taking a second. You don't have to take days, but, you know, set aside 30 minutes and just yeah. really ask yourself the, the easy questions, the hard questions, and and write down those goals, dreams, and aspirations. It's a, it's a powerful um, exercise. It truly is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I know, uh, Drew, you definitely already have your life list here, and you're probably adding to it, probably deleting some things here and there. Um, I know yesterday we talked, and you, you actually have one on uh, your blog. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. So when I made my first life list, it was 101 things to do in 1,001 days. Mm. And That's I did cool. that. Well, I didn't do everything on there, but I made that list, and I put it online and marked some stuff off, wrote about it on my blog. People were like, cool, started reading my blog. The really cool people made lists of their own, which is awesome, right? Yeah. Inspired some other people. And then after that 1,001 days, I just cut it in half. So I have, I probably have six lists out there in the world right now. Not everything accomplished. Right now, I have a list of 55 things to accomplish in 555 days. Cool. And we can talk yeah. about specific yeah. things on that list. But um, it's just kind of a roadmap of where you want to go and things you want to do. Some are big, some are small. Okay. Can you give us some examples of what are on your... Yeah, is there a way we could just pull it up and like view some of your... Sure, absolutely. I have your website pulled up right here. Okay, go to... Um, or is it a different website? Yeah, go to a different website. Got you. Okay. Go to definingaudacitywordpress.com. And I've got it pulled up on my phone too, just so I can talk through it. And this is my this is my current list that I have now. And I was as we were talking about it yesterday, I haven't updated in a while. Like I like to go and mark this you stuff. So wordplay.com? WordPress.com. Yeah. WordPress. FindingAudacity.wordpress.com. So I wrote my first book back in 2021 and finished my second book, which is Stop Eating S Sandwiches. Um, that's the name of it. <laughs> can't say dude. can't say it on the air. But um, hmm. that's the name of my second book, and I'm working on it right now. So, so obviously cool. I haven't accomplished that. I do some painting. Like it's, it's called, um, what is it called? Um, some kind of art. Anyway, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's it's real abstract. So I want to sell one of my paintings, that's even cool. if I sell it for twenty five bucks, whatever. Yeah, you know, that's really cool. Um, 
relaunch my podcast, my personal podcast, mm. um, make the USA Today bestsellers list, that type of stuff. I'm a runner, so run two half marathons. I've completed one. I need another wow. one. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That's well, I've crazy. completed one during this little stretch. I know how hard that is. Mm, Summit a 14-er. That. I've done a, 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 a summit at a 14,000-foot mountain in Colorado. Actually, two, and what? I want to do that Ooh. again. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, scroll down, Travis. Scroll down. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And hit other or older. Where is that? Next, more? This one right here? Uh, I can't see where you're at. Nope. Nope. Over to the left. Up. Oh, this is good radio right here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Solid radio right there. There we go. You guys don't know what's and, going on, but we're going to do it. And it says walk the walk again, me painting right there. Yeah. And then that, right. that's my list. All right, we're, we're going to actually show the viewers this, too. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, web with people. Boom. So go on a ski trip's on there. My, my son really wants to do that. Um, that's something that has to do with my speaking. I want to get another tattoo, so shout out to Tarleton Tattoo. One of our underwriters may come see them. Um, Look at this, guys. Finished my second book. You already you already completed that one, right? No, my, I completed my first book, not my second book. Yeah. Okay, got you. Word. Create supplemental workbook, cookbook, sell one, sell one painting. How much are you trying to sell that painting? Man, I'll sell it for anything. I don't care. <laughs> Give me some money for it. Might buy it from you. It's called neurographic art. That's what it's called. It's a process. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll do that as a staff one time. We can do oh, some yeah. neurographic art. I actually <laughs> need something oh, for my apartment. I'm going to buy a painting off you, and you might be able to complete Let's it. Let's go. Mark it <laughs> off. Mark it off. That's what I say oh, after yeah. after I do something is mark it off. Hashtag yeah. mark it off. Yeah. yeah. Put it out there on yeah. social. <clears throat> and again, it's not about making it about me and all these things that I want to do. It's about inspiring other people to mm -hmm. live a bold, adventurous, mm -hmm. and intentional life, for to make a list of their own. Like and let me say this, and I will say it a hundred more times before we get out of here today. It's cool to make a life list and it's fun to mark stuff off, but it is a game changer when you can help somebody else put their goals, dreams, and aspirations in the spotlight. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I would do on my radio show is we'd brainstorm a list. If they didn't have one or if they did have a list, they'd share it with me, and then I'd ask to see the list. And can I share that story? The My favorite thing I've ever helped somebody mark off their life list? Yeah, for okay. sure. All right, your show, but I've hijacked it. No, no, no. It's <laughs> our show. All right, so there's a singer-songwriter on the Texas music scene. Her name's Caitlin Butts. And Caitlin okay. came on my show, and I did not know her at the time. And we did a phoner. And we talked. We heard Caitlin's story, which is inspiring. And then at the end, I said, do you have a life list? Teed it up, told her what it was. She said no. And then we started brainstorming, and she wanted to play Red Rocks and play the Grand Old Opry. You Red know, that's Rocks. pretty common for wow. artists. And then just out of nowhere, she says, I would love to give my mom baby donkeys what no way. i said what what are you talking about what's that story and she said that they had just moved to ardmore oklahoma and they take this special route home when they're going back to their house and they drive by these donkeys she goes i would love just to have donkeys of our own mm -hmm. <laughs> cool and i said well katie butts i've got two baby donkeys in rainbow texas that i need to get rid of what no six way. weeks what six, six weeks later i loaded them up in a horse trailer drove them across the <clears> river <throat> and dropped them off at her house True story. <laughs> That's cool. if you That's go on crazy. caitlin butts Instagram page. She doesn't have them anymore. But if you go on her Instagram page and scroll down, you'll see pictures of Thelma and Louise. Seriously. That's, cool. That's her name. No That's the, the donkey's so names. Cute. Yep. Cool, man. That's so, awesome. So Caitlin Butts and I, she's big time now. I mean, she's yeah. Nashville big. She, we're we're tied together forever. I could text her right now and be like, how are Thelma and Louise? Yeah. You know? That's great. Uh, yeah. But that's, it was important to her. It was important bone. to her mom, where it's probably not important to any of you guys to have baby donkeys, yeah, right? Nah, nah, but, nah. For the, but for her, it <clears> was <throat> a big deal, and I was able to help her accomplish that goal. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for how sure. Did, how did you have baby donkeys? We live on some property in Rainbow, okay. so oh, they're nice. always popping out babies. Uh, and even, we can't keep them all. They're, <laughs> yeah. they're not, they don't do anything except keep the grass down. They're kind of like yeah. lawn art, so oh, okay. we give them away all the time. I see. I see. Cool. Interesting. Well, I think, it's, I think we reached that point in time where we need to start I'm a hand. I'm a hand. This is the steer wheel. See it, guys. I'm <laughs> handing it to to Drew. I'm moving into the passenger seat, and Drew is going to do his thing and help me, us with our life list. You mean coach you guys up? Coach us with that. our life list. Okay. We need this. So if we were really doing this, pull out your notes, guys. We're you, taking notes. You guys <laughs> would have a piece of paper and a pen, but if you have your phones, you can type it in there as well. That's what I'm doing right now. I All could right. go grab us some paper real quick. Here's the here's you know the want. deal. You have to write this stuff down for sure. Okay. Yeah. So many people ask, do you have a list? They're like, yeah, I've got a list. And I was like, sweet, is it written down? They're like, nope. And I was like, it's not real then. Not yep, not happening. Because there is something powerful <clears throat> about writing it down. It's called auto-suggestion. When you write it down, you plant a seed in your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind starts working to accomplish those goals. Yeah. The other uh... thing, when you accomplish these goals, this is real, and you take a pen and you mark through it after you accomplish it, before that pen leaves the paper, 
this is guaranteed without a doubt. You guys ready for this? Mm -hmm. Before the pen comes off the paper, you're automatically thinking, what's next? Mm. So if you were mm -hmm. like, I want to jump out of an airplane, cross it off. What's next? I want to eat a double scoop of ice cream. Cool. That's when I'm going to, I'm going to do this next Wednesday or whatever it is. You're yeah. constantly looking on what's next, what's next. And I'm a firm believer. If you are setting goals, working hard to accomplish goals, actually accomplishing goals, and then setting more goals, your life's moving forward. You're doing pretty well. Yeah. yeah. That's super cool because, you know, there's mm. stuff I've completed or I'm sure everyone has done and they just forget about they did it. But if they had and it wasn't as important to them, but if they had a list and that's something you wanted to do when you complete it, you'll remember it forever. You know what I mean? OK, yeah. it's funny you say that. This is a cool story. It's about auto suggestion. Yeah. Buddy of mine, best friend in the world. Known him, known him since the fifth grade. He was my college roommate, Greg Jones. Shout out. Hmm. Him and his wife on their honeymoon made a list, not necessarily a life list or a bucket list, just made a list of things they wanted to do as a married couple. And then they got back home and that list found itself in the bottom of their underwear drawer, right? Because life <laughs> happened. You yeah. know, they had kids, they have a mortgage now, they have jobs and bills, and they forgot about it. <clears throat> well, years later, they find this list. And it's to your point, Travis, they bring this list out and they're like, well, hell, we did that. We did that. Mm -hmm. We've done that. They hadn't done everything, huh. but they had accomplished a lot of those mm -hmm. things. Again, mm -hmm. they had planted that seed in their subconscious mind. I see. Really nice. cool. I like that. Super cool. Okay, so you want me to coach you up? Yeah, yeah let's do it. Yeah. Everyone get their notes out. Yep, I have it ready. All right, here we go. I call it life list on the top. And it's on the phone. This is so, you know. I'm probably going to transfer this. <laughs> we have to, no, here's paper. the thing. We have to transfer what we're well, taking look, out. How about paper. this? I'm going to go get some paper and some pens for y'all. Okay, okay, that works too. Works. That All right, then we'll, we'll talk about it. He can catch up. Yeah, for sure. Tip number one, without a doubt, there are no rules to a life list. It doesn't have to be 101 things in 1,001 days. It doesn't have to be 55 things in 555 days. Mm. It's your list. It could be five things you want to accomplish before the end of the year. It could be 10 things you want to accomplish before you turn 25, whatever it is. My sister told me once, she goes, I've got five things on my list, and there's no timetable. And I was like, sweet, what are they? And she wanted to meet Dolly Parton or see Dolly Parton in concert. She wanted to make the perfect martini. She wanted to go on a trip in an RV, and there were two other things. And that was her list. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Cool. It's yours. Own it. Right? So many people are like, I can't make a list. What? I mean, what if it's, what if it's one thing that you want to accomplish before your 40th birthday? I mean, that's still a list, yeah. right, yeah. of things you want to do. So that's number one. Number two, it has to be measurable. Yeah. Okay. It can't be, I want to be a good radio DJ. We all want to be a good radio DJ. What or, makes a good radio DJ? Well, right? it has to be something that you can actually accomplish and mark off. So many people I talk to, it's, I want to be a good dad. Well, yeah, I want to be a good dad too. But <laughs> yeah. what can you do, specific things, measurable <clears throat> things you can do to be a good dad? Like take your kid camping. Um, any Anything. Take your kid to a ranger game. That That's nice. being a good dad. Yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, for you sure. You have to be able to mark it off a list. So that's good. Cool. All right, tip number three. You have to remember the little things. Like I mentioned, my first list, I had eat a double scoop of ice cream and eat lobster. Now, I'm going to tell you the lobster story real quick. I know why that was on the list. You ready? Yes, sir. When I was like in junior high, we went to a seafood restaurant. And the waiter was taking everyone's order. And I he came to me and he said, uh, what would you like? And I said, I want lobster. My mom was like, oh, Drew, honey. We, no, 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 no. We only eat lobster on a special occasion. Well, I guess it was never a special enough occasion the rest of my <laughs> life. So I never tried to order it again. I was, funny, like, come, I was like, come on. So I put it on my list to eat lobster, and we didn't. I just didn't go to a restaurant and eat lobster. We like cooked lobster at the house. That's like, actually one of the so good. We boiled it at the house. So it was pretty cool to mark that off. But that's why that made it to my list. Nice. So little things. Um, also, I sold something on Craigslist. I'd never done that. That was one of the first things I ever marked off. I went to a wine tasting. Ooh, never done that. So Did, again, that's again, one of mine. That's, that's a, good on mine. It's little, right? It's not a big thing. It's not <clears throat> jumping out of an airplane or meeting the president, which were on my list as well. Those are big ticket mm -hmm. items. But little things. Don't forget about those as you're making your list. Yeah. Cool. We, get, we get caught up in the over the top a lot of times. Should I do like categories? You can. However you want to break it up. And that's one of the things you were getting paper when I said this. It's your list. No okay. rules. Okay. Just yeah. own it. Whatever it is. It could be five mm. things. It could be five categories with five things in each category. Whatever it is. Okay. Cool. All right, the next one. This is a big one. Everything, everything costs money. Yeah. Fact. Okay, so let me let me tell you this. On my first life list was to dress up for Halloween. All right? My oh, yeah. sister lived in Dallas, or lives in Dallas, and they would theme it up every year. And this one particular year, they um, 
we're doing the Wizard of Oz. Okay. Well, they have a bunch of people in their family. So the lion was taken, the scarecrow was taken, the tin man was taken, Dorothy was, everybody was taken. So I was going to be the yellow brick road. <laughs> so I went to Goodwill and I bought like a, a bright yellow turtleneck, some bright yellow sweatpants. Like I went to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and bought some foam board and I made, um, mm -hmm. you know, I painted it like the yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. I got a yellow hat. Not a big deal, right? <laughs> yeah. But that little ensemble still cost me about $30. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So it's funny. I made my first life list 101 things to do in 1,001 days. And then I said, how much is this going to cost? And I put pen to paper, got the calculator out. It was going to cost me like $216,000 oh, to yeah. accomplish everything on the list. Dang. Something gosh. stupid. I was like, come on. So um, drink a beer and eat a hot dog at every Mer American League ballpark was on the list. That would be well, my wife Expensive, is a yeah. flight attendant for Southwest. And I was like, oh, I fly for free. This shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, but you have to get to the ball field once you get to the airport. You have to buy the ticket to the game. You have to buy said beer. You have to buy said hot dog. I mean, it's going to cost a lot of money. Oh sure. So just keep that in mind. Everything costs money. Yeah, okay. Uh, the next one is relational joy. Are you guys familiar with the book Into the Wild by John Krakauer? Yeah. Oh, with like the monsters? No, that's Wait. called Where the Wild oh, Things Are. Okay. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. That's what I was thinking of. No. My fault. Into the Wild. Um, they made a movie about it. It's about a guy named Chris McCandless who walked up and down the West Coast oh. as a nomad, and he <clears throat> died in a school bus in Alaska. Oh, okay? Wow. Do you guys not know this? Mm -mm. Familiar mm -mm. with this? Okay. So on your life list that you're making, r write down, read Into the Wild. It's a great, great book. Anyway... He dies alone in this school bus, and right before he died in the margins of the book that he was reading, he writes, happiness is only real when shared. Chris McCandless, this nomad his entire life, finally figured it out, but he figured it out right before he died. So I've really leaned into that, that happiness is only real when shared. So as you're making your list, what adventures do you want to go on? But more importantly, who do you want to go on those adventures with? That's deep. I got yeah. goosebumps from that for real. That's, that's interesting. That's something else you know, right there. I, I want to go to Paris. Fantastic. Go to Paris. Who do you want to go to Paris with? The other way that this generates relational joy is you start to have conversations with your friends. Like, hey, I started making this life list. Life list? What's a life list? You explain what a life list is. They make their own life list. And they're like, you want to go see... Cody Johnson in concert. I want to see Cody Johnson in concert. You guys go see Cody Johnson in concert together. Yeah. So instead of talking about the weather, the price of gas, the Texas Rangers, who are about to win the World Series, you're talking about you're talking about really cool things, your goals, dreams, and aspirations. Mm -hmm. So you have to include people on these adventures that you're coming up with, okay? Relational joy. The next one, tip number six. Here, let's do it radio style. Tip number six. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, should, I should make Jesse do that. Jesse, do it. Send yeah, you're the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the numbers. Yeah, you're the tip number person. You Why go ahead do it. Because we, we're getting you involved. Um, yeah. Too, okay. Too quiet out here. <laughs> how do I say it? Just say Just it. Just tip number six? No, with some tip number six. Some, some Just like that. <laughs> spice. Right, come on. Come on. Okay. Tip number six. Ah, there <laughs> we go. Those That's are nice. actually really good. Oh, Peak a little bit, but it's good. All right. Tip number six is you have to ask yourself the easy questions. Here's some easy questions. Okay. Where do you want to go? What do you want to eat? Who do you want to mm. meet? Right? Anytime you say bucket list or life list, people are like, I want to go here. I want to do this. What do I want? You know, what do you want to experience? Or maybe it is something you want to, maybe you do want to eat lobster. You've never eaten lobster. Maybe you've never eaten sushi. Maybe there's a specific restaurant that you want to eat at. Man, I always yeah. want to check out that restaurant. I want to make my own sushi roll. There you go, dude. That's a great one. If, you, write it down. Dude, that's a good one. Yeah. Nice. I'm it's a really it, cool I'm process, too. The ginger roll. The ginger oh. roll. <laughs> you, oh, you mean make your own style like, of like my sushi own roll. sushi roll. That's well, different. Like whatever right I want. And that's, uh, Drew, that's, very, that's really um, interesting because, you know, I went to Philadelphia, like, let's say three months for, earlier from where we are now and I didn't make any preparation like what I want to do what I want to eat what I want to so I ended up just spending the whole time in Chinatown right. <laughs> you know what I mean which is good. cool but like there's so much other stuff I could have saw you know man I tell you what if you guys go on a vacation I don't care where you go make a list just for that vacation yeah and you'll understand this more when you have kids um, because you could be pulled a hundred different directions or you could end up the whole time in Chinatown but if you're like hey I want to ride go-karts I want to spit, you know, I want to go to the beach. I want to um, eat 
sushi, whatever it is, make that list for that particular trip. It's a really cool exercise. It truly is. Yeah. All right, Jesse, hit me up. Number seven. Tip number seven. Why didn't we start this at number (laughs) one? Sure, right? (laughs) Now you have to ask yourself the hard questions, too. And this is what I mean by that. You have to ask yourself, what is something that I failed at that I want to try again? Mm. What is something that somebody said I could never do and I want to prove them wrong? I mean, that's that's deep. Yeah, for yeah. real. I mean, that's a different level. That's different than, you know, where you want to go on vacation, and, yeah. you know, the type of food you want to eat. But my big one on that, the story that I share when I speak is I'm a runner and I had completed three marathons and I had not broken four hours in the marathon and I wanted to break four hours. So I set it, set the goal, went to Nashville, ran that marathon, dehydrated at mile 24. They took me oh. to the hospital in an ambulance. Oh, wow. And I, so I didn't do it. I didn't finish. I didn't break four hours and my confidence was shattered. I didn't run for a while. And I said, Nope, I'm going to get back on that horse. And I set that goal again. And I ran in Colleen, Texas, and it was the coldest, wettest, nastiest day I've ever run. And I broke it in, in, you know, three hours and 57. Let's go, man. So it was awesome. But, um, because I'd been knocked down, punched in the face, kind of kicked in the crotch. I was like, Nope. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's not going to define me. I'm going to get back, get back up and do it again. Yeah. So that was important to me. So you have to ask yourself the easy questions, but you also have to ask yourself the hard questions. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Jesse, hit me up eight. Tip number eight. Never stop learning. What do you want to learn? Do you want to learn a language? Do you want to learn how to cook? Do you want to learn how to play an instrument? Do you want to learn how to rap? Drive yes, sir. <laughs> what, you know, what, what is it you want to learn? My grandfather told me when I graduated from college, never stop learning. And that stuck with me. There's, we can always be learning something new. Brandon mentioned something right before we kicked this thing off. We were talking about Photoshop. He's like, is it easy? Like, yeah. I'm going to write that down. Maybe it's we'll e- learn it. Wait, it's easy. It the easiest way to learn that, well, for me, was YouTube. Because, like, right? with my photography stuff, I mean, photographers are very rude sometimes. Especially yeah, yeah. with, like, other photographers. <clears throat> it's a very competitive business, and a lot of them aren't willing to help. Like, like share the information? Out. Yeah. So, YouTube, and there's a lot of, like, free tutorials on there. I mean, if you can find, like, an Indian guy, he, he knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. The Indian you, guy on YouTube knows everything. YouTube is a tremendous way to learn anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is a tool. It truly is. We use it kind of as a zone out, turn off the frontal lobe type of thing, right? But if you want to use it as a tool to learn something, it's absolutely yeah. powerful. Man, yeah. I, I got a brand new PC. I'm an investment man. I wanted to spend a lot of money to get a PC to help me with my music and eventually start creating a video game. And... No, that's cool, man. I, is all this written down? I somewhere else it is. Well, I've, okay, but I, I'm gonna make I'm put gonna on your life list. Down. Get the PC. That's a life list. <laughs> well, item. well, I'm saying I already got the PC. Oh, I got the PC. Yeah, I okay, got the PC. Uh-huh. I'm an investment. Um, and oh gosh, where was I going with this? What were we just talking about? About making videos, Photoshop. Okay, yeah. Um, and so I've been I've been wanting to learn Photoshop. I've been wanting to like make videos about stuff, trying to like put it on TikTok and stuff. So it's like. Okay. I, I just don't know where to start with that. So. Sure. I mean, so you can and get I, like the Adobe Suite, which yeah. has all the different programs. Mm-hmm. But some of the, you know, we're talking about Canva, and yeah. they have a lot of the real simple apps to, to make the yeah. videos and stuff like that, too. So you don't have to invest all into the Adobe yeah. product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you wanted to learn Photoshop specifically, which I highly endorse because yeah. I, I use it and it's a very powerful it's tool. so good. Right. It, it's going to cost, I don't even know how much it's going to cost. Um, a, with, with Tarleton, we already have it with our. Um, Oh, let's go. Tuition. So yeah. I can, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to download it. I have to like request access. Okay. So let's jump to the end of the conversation and we'll come back to our tips. Okay. Mm-hmm. I talk about this all the time, vision and action. Okay. So a life list is the vision, mm. but you have to take action on these things. So your action yeah. item is, and this is something that you can do today. As soon as we get done with this podcast is to go find out how you download it. Just, I mean, it's going to take a phone call. It's going to take a search. It's going to, you know, it's going to be super easy to figure that out. But it's, if you just have a vision and you have all this cool stuff written down and there is no action associated with it, it is nothing more than a wish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm vision and sure action. if you log in with your student email, it should let I, you I know. downloaded the Adobe Cloud and I, I did log in with it. It was like making me request access since I guess I'm oh. not on the Tarleton campus. I couldn't So, I, I mean... I don't know. It's like really interesting, but I'll you'll get it. I'll definitely you'll yeah. get it. Yeah, but about back to the YouTube thing. I I uh, I used YouTube so much trying like whenever I was trying to set up my PC because I was still new to like having a computer to myself. So you know I got to worry about viruses. I got to worry about you know keeping it healthy, keeping it clean. Um, 
uh, when to know that it's going down if I need to replace a part or a fan. So, so I just watch YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, I, yeah. I would just, instead of sitting down watching a brainless video on YouTube about video games or something, I would, I would look up how a PC works. How does yeah. a computer work? Now I know exactly, like, I don't know exactly how it works, but I know almost, I can tell you the exact process of how a PC works because of YouTube, because I was like so obsessed with, I got a PC, whoa, how right. does it work? So, so interesting. That's a whole separate conversation. You used social media, right, as a tool. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, like you explained, watching a mindless video game on YouTube, right. social media is using us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether exactly. it's YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is. We are the product. Mm -hmm. We are. And, it, and if you haven't watched mm -hmm. um, Social Dilemma, the Netflix thing on social I media, need that needs to be on your list also because that is eye-opening how we are cannibalizing ourselves. That we just go down those rabbit holes and they're taking advantage of us. It's a social social dilemma. 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 Yeah. That's a public service announcement to everybody listening to this thing. Yeah, for sure. Guys, don't make if you're listening, dude, this is for y'all too. Most importantly, y'all need to be taking these notes and you know, when y'all make y'all's life list for sure. I just and, put one anyway, online that says <clears throat> get off of all social media because it's so hard to just stop it all. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but it can be a tool, but I highly endorse a 60 90 day hiatus from social i've done that it's a good reset and then you come back in and you come back in intentional about using it instead of being used man yeah. that's a good that's a good life list item for sure yeah, oh, yeah. i definitely like learned that over the years like I'll, I'll i'll be watching youtube and i'll have this recommendation and i'll be like what tiktok is actually doing to you and i'll watch it and i'm like whoa that's crazy and i like don't i don't like getting on tiktok unless someone else sends me a video to watch right or I don't like it. It's just, it's so bad for you. Yeah, you'll dig that documentary for sure. I know. It's called Social Dilemma. Social Dilemma. All right, let's finish up these tips, and then let's go around and start making a life list for yes, you guys. Yes, sir. All right, Jesse, hit me up, number nine. Tip number nine. Never stop giving back. And what I mean by that is what tugs at your heartstrings? What's your cause? Are you into, do you like support little kids? Do you like support sick kids? Do you like to support old people or animals or whatever it is? And put something on your life list supporting that cause. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, you know, we're doing something here cool at the radio station. I'll go ahead and talk about it. It's called Giving Tuesday. It's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving where we focus on 10 nonprofits. I'm going to be very transparent. I picked those 10 nonprofits because they're near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them are. Special Olympics. I love that organization. Yeah, it's awesome. You got kiddos that are not making any excuses for their disability, and they're fighting their tails off. Let's go. Right. I can yeah. get behind sure. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe your thing is... Um, literacy maybe your thing is bullying maybe your thing is whatever your thing is the tugs at your heartstrings you need to support that whether it's time energy dollars whatever mm -hmm. so that's that's a great life list item i'm not saying you have to have 10 things on there about supporting you know the paluxy river children's advocacy center but something on there a cool organization that we're going to highlight on giving tuesday is big brothers big sisters there's so many kids in this community that need a mentor that you just have to give a little bit of time and energy to these kiddos to make a difference in their life. Let's go. So yeah, I can get on I, my soapbox. I can get on my soapbox all day about that. Yeah, I think I was a part of that for a good minute. That's cool. And then the last one, Jesse, number ten. Tip number ten. What's your important thing? So for me, my number one important thing, without a doubt, are my kids. So on my life list, man, I got a bunch of stuff I want to do with my kiddos. A bunch of stuff. Like I want to take my son to the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. I want to take my daughter camping. And I want to share a story about camping in just a minute. Um, so my life list, I would say a majority of it has to do with my children. We talk about relational joy. Well, these adventures that I go on, I want my kiddos to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So um, what's your most important thing? You have to decide. Maybe it's your significant other. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe it's your siblings. Maybe it's your best friend. Just making that decision. Yeah. Can I share my camping story before we do Please. your thing? Yes. Okay. So I was speaking to a group in Fort Worth once. It was a women's group. And at the end, I had time to take some questions, which I don't, don't normally do. And this lady asked me, she goes, what's the favorite thing you've ever marked off your life list? And at the time, I didn't have a really good answer. I didn't know. But then I stepped back and thought about it for a second. And this is the one that stuck out to me. Um, when I made my first life list, my son was around four years old. And I wanted to take him camping. 
So after um, the 4th of July weekend, when he was four, I said, um, we're going to mark it off. Here we go. So my family came down to Rainbow. We hung out 4th of July weekend. As soon as they left the property, I was going to get in the truck with my son, and we were going to go to Meridian State Park, which is about 25 minutes from the house. We weren't going to Big Bend. We weren't going to the Grand Canyon. We were going to Meridian State Park. Mm -hmm. I remember being at the gate. The truck was packed full of sleeping bags and tents, or a tent, one tent. Um, we had uh, our bikes. We had um, fishing poles. We had all the things we needed to camp. And I said, man, we shouldn't go. All the excuses, just blah, 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 excuse after excuse. It's hot. Mm -hmm. It's Texas in July. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing real estate at the time. I was like, man, what if one of my clients needs me? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're coming off a holiday weekend. I've already taken too much time off. Excuse, blah, 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 blah. But I gave my excuses the middle finger, and I drove out of the gate. We went to Meridian State Park, camped for two days, and it was awesome. We did all the things. We hiked. We fished. We made a campfire. We ate s'mores. We caught fireflies. Awesome right. experience. Nice. It was cool, right? So giving my excuses the middle finger was one of the reasons why it was a big deal to me. But the really cool thing is, and this is, I get emotional when I talk about this sometimes. Let's do it. That last night we were there, my, we were laying in the tent, and it was hot. God, it was hot. Uh, my son made his first life list. Mm. He had 10 things he wanted to do and 10 people he wanted to do those things with. He wanted to go fishing with his poppy, who's my father. He wanted to build a sand castle with his mom. He wanted to go to a ranger game with his cousins, Jake and Cal. So 10 things, 10 people, right? Guys, my son is now 13 years old, and this is how he talks. Hey, Dad, can we add something to my life list? Hey, Dad, can we mark something off That's my life cool. list? Cool. I've been, I've, I have That's interviewed cool. no less than 250 people on my radio show and podcast about this, mm -hmm. adults that don't get it and my 13-year-old son gets it. That's crazy. That's why that's my favorite thing to ever mark up. <laughs> cool, man. That's, really that's cool. cool. Nice. Wow. So anyway. That's eye-opening. <clears throat> now, enough about me. Let's talk about you guys. Yeah, let's talk about us, man. Jesse starting first because Jesse is the biggest talker here. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm, I'm looking over there. Did you just write down the tips or did you write down things that could possibly be on your life list? Um, they were things that I mean, they just popping into my head. Oh, let's go. What do you got? What do you, what'd you write down? Just one thing. So, um, I obviously run my own photography business. Okay. Well, like recently it's been really slow and I haven't really been like pushing it as much as I should. So I want to get it more up and going and I want to like, so I'm looking into getting a newer camera than I have because what I have is what my mom passed down to me when I started it so I'm gonna do that and then I have a bunch of places that I want to go and like take pictures for clients at so okay that's cool so you want to get a new camera that's yeah. that's a life list item yeah. and then you have specific places you want to shoot yeah okay what are some of those places you um set? I want to go to Montana cool. Colorado Utah oh. and then there's salt flats in West Texas that I want to go to and then the glass beaches, and then Arizona. Okay, very cool. So what she's done is she's, yeah, she wants to go to these places, but now she's incorporated her photography into it, which I think is super cool, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I love it. Your life list is now officially started. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Randon, what do you got, dude? Dude, he just, he's got oh, categories. Sorry, I, he's on both I sides have, of the paper. I have I mean, three categories. I have music, a life category, food, travel, and other. Okay. Um, my main thing is I make music, and... I want to actually go somewhere with it. And so I put get 100,000 streams as like a goal. Okay, that's a good goal. And I like it. it's measurable, right? He can mark that off if he accomplishes yeah. it. I dig it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I want to learn piano. It's like the one instrument that I just, I, I need to learn it. Okay, I've so take take piano lessons. And learned and actually learned it. Are you, so are you going to do this on YouTube or are you going to actually take piano lessons? Pay someone to teach you piano. I don't know because I have a really close friend who is self-taught, completely self-taught, and he's the best piano player Tarleton has ever had. Oh, shut so up. I don't wow. know. Nice. I know. Bold. And he's crazy. And okay. He's completely self-taught, but he's also been playing like eight hours a day for like a few years now. Okay. It's crazy. So my challenge to you on that, because it's, it's one thing to kind of dabble in it, you know, have your friend kind of show you some things, watch some YouTube videos. Maybe it's play one song on the piano to family and friends. Right. So, you I mean, you have to be pretty good at piano in order to do that. You got to yeah. know how to play. And so but you're actually working towards something you can actually mark off. That's my only challenge on that. I like that. I'm writing down. He's writing. Again, not good radio. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. What, else, what else you got on there? Okay. Um, I want to, I'm um, very recently, not really recently, but like the last year I've been starting to work out a lot more and I put get jacked really big. 
Okay. And I would run, 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 want to run a half marathon because okay. of that. Okay. Time out. Getting jacked falls into the <laughs> unmeasurable <laughs> category. Yeah, kind of. I want to get jacked too, and I'm pretty jacked. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to bench press a certain amount? Okay. Do you want to, you know, what what is it? Do you want your biceps to be a certain, you know, circumference? What do you, what do you want? What does jacked mean to you? It has to be measurable so I, you can mark it off. I I want to be able to wear any shirt I want without people thinking like, "Damn, he's small." You know what I mean? I know people don't really like think that, but it's like it's like one of like my goals I've always wanted to like. Okay, so let's let's quantify it, okay? If you bench press 250 pounds, that's probably going to be the case. That's a lot, that's by crazy. the way. That yeah, is, that is a little. How much can you bench lot. right now? I've never asked I, another I man haven't, question. I have not bench pressed in a long time. Okay. So I don't know. So what do you? How do? You, what do you work out? What are you doing? I I I go to the gym, but the gym that I go to at my apartment is very like bad, and so I usually use the machines that they have, and I use dumbbells. I do a lot of push ups, sit ups. Okay. Just like pull ups. Here's a goal for you. This is interesting. I set a goal when I hurt myself running to do a thousand push ups in one day. Mm, that's a lot, dude. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, I, it, took, actually, it took me all day to do it, but I did it. But you can't just do it. You have to train to do it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's about the journey about leading up to that, but that's about setting a quantitative goal that you can actually so, work off. So I actually have something similar. I broke my shoulder. Okay. Um, so, so you can't do a push up? I can. Now I can. But I, bro- I broke my shoulder. That's why I'm like recently now starting to get back into it a lot more because I can actually work out without feeling pain in my shoulder and so i I, it's it's been really hard for me to do push-ups lately and i feel like that something like that would be pretty pretty cool okay so i think a possible another possible life list item not to add stuff to your list but maybe get a new gym membership yeah like someplace Uh, a real gym you know if you want to get jacked really get jacked i mean you you may have to you have yeah get out of the apartment and and i haven't been going as hard as just because I still have to build up the muscle in my shoulder to actually get back to 100% strength. And it's been over six months now, I think, and I'm still not even back to 100% on my shoulder. So that's, like, one of the main things that's, like, really, like, keeping me from going forward. If that makes sense. Quantitative, quantitative, quantitative. Okay? And, again, you can set a goal, maybe do... 50 push-ups at one time. They're like, okay, I did that. Now maybe it's 75 or maybe it's 1,000 over the course of the day, whatever it is. Let that shoulder get build up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start at something that you can actually accomplish. Of course. Dang. All right, we're coming back around, so keep riding. Travis, you're up. Uh, <clears throat> while you guys were talking, I would have made some a little bit of me uh, would have my list. Um, I want to perform for homecoming. You know, I was supposed to perform this year. Um, I had a flyer with me on and everything, and I ended up being uh, – pushed to the side and disrespected so i left um, so that's something that, I, that that ended up failing that i want to redo next year you let's know go what I mean? so let's that's go. something we're raiming for next year that's a good one um learn the base and you know that's very broad so i was thinking about why you were talking to him but it's not measurable i want to be able to play the, the song some by steve lacy with the bass and for Ooh. me that's that's one of my goals that's cool that's measurable. <clears throat> i want to be able to dj an event hey can which, i can we yeah. back up you play that song on the bass on this podcast Oh, I like different it. Level. that would be cool, different man. Different level, mark it off. That is Let's a go. different level. That is a different level. Um, the third thing on the list is I want to be able to DJ an event, which is going to happen pretty soon because we have a DJ board here now. We're, we're learning everything. I'm going to learn everything. I know Rand's going to oh, learn with me, yeah, too. Yeah, we definitely learn. And we're both pretty much going to be able to DJ an event, which is going to be cool. That's awesome. Now, let me say something about that. If you know you're going to do something, go ahead and put it on the list. Yeah. And this is why. Because I've had something. And I was like, oh, I'm doing that for sure. And it got close to the thing, whatever the thing is. Maybe it was a concert I wanted to see. And something happened that was good. And I could have easily talked myself out of it. But I was like, no, I can't talk myself out of it. It's on the list. Yeah. Right? Go ahead and put it down on there. If it's a done deal, without a doubt, going to happen, still put it on the list. Because, again, there's something powerful about taking that pen, marking through it. Because you're, what are you going to think, Jesse, as soon as that pen comes off the paper? I'm going to think about the next thing. What's next? That's right. What's next? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, Jesse, back to you. What else you got? Back she wrote some me. more things down. Let's hear it. Um, my biggest thing right now is to actually graduate because I grew up in a really small town, and with a small town comes a lot of trash talking about everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. You're not the only person that said that. I've heard so many people say that. It's, it's really bad. It's so bad. And I kind of, my senior year, I kind of kept my head down, but my ag teacher actually brought it to my attention that... She set me aside one day. She's like, I don't care, like, what you do as long as you graduate, like, 
I want you to do that because everybody is sitting there and saying that you're not even going to make it past your first semester. And that kind of hurt a little bit because it was coming from somebody that I had been really good friends with since I was like a baby. And so I confronted him about it and he was like, yeah, I just don't think you're going to do that good. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) You're like, hold my beer and watch this. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's awesome. And just for the record, I love the story behind it. I want to talk about that in just a second. But every single student that works at this radio station, whether you're a DJ or you're a student assistant, needs to be put, it's graduate needs to be on your life list, right? Mm -hmm. I love the story behind it, and this is why I love it. I love story. Everything that I do revolves around story because I'm a firm believer when you know somebody's story. Now that I know that about Jesse, right, there is a level of understanding, there is a level of empathy, and there's almost a level of love. When you know somebody's story, you cannot hate another person. That is a fact. Mm. You don't have to see eye to eye on everything. You don't have to agree on everything, but you cannot hate that other person, and that's what's wrong with the world that we live in. We don't take the time to get to know somebody's story. Mm. And just that sharing that little story about some dude disrespecting her from her hometown about hey, you're not gonna be able to graduate and now her motivation to prove him wrong let's go and I think that's it's, awesome it's also really funny because um he dropped out of EMT school six weeks after he started it. Uh, don't worry about him though you can't worry about I him. think it's funny yeah, just... <laughs> it's, it's funny laugh about it for a second but don't worry about him focus on you girl Thanks. get that diploma yeah yeah or you uh what year are you uh Jess? I am a sophomore. Cool. Well, you already went past your first year. Yeah. You're already breaking that. Nice. Cool. I love it. Brandon, what do you got? What's next? Um, I added make shoulders, abs, and chest look amazing. I did 500 <laughs> push-ups yes, slash sit-ups. Okay, again, that's not measurable, dude. What no. is amazing? <laughs> what is I said, amazing? I said, I, said, I'm, I said 500 push-ups and sit-ups. I don't know if I want to do that in one day because that's – I feel like – I could do it, but that's really hard for me. I'll send you a blog. I'll send you a blog post on how I did a thousand and see that's if that'll inspire you. That's very impressive. Like I can't even imagine that right now. Um, I'm still trying to think about other things. That's cool. Just but, keep it going. That's the cool thing about it. You guys will be thinking about this all day. Yeah. You'll be at dinner tonight with some friends. You'll be like, I want to add this to my life list. Be, right. this, I, I, I'm you know, be constantly be thinking it down. about it now. Piece of paper will be full by the end of the um, day. So, Travis, you give me one more, and then I've got an idea I want to share with you guys. Go ahead. Okay, one more. Hmm. I want to be able to reach 200 pounds on this bulk I'm going on right now. You know, last year I reached 190. I start off at 150. And what is it? 160. Huh? What is it? What are you trying to reach? 200? 200, 200 pounds. Yes, sir. You want to weigh 200 pounds? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Before I go on my cut. Okay. So uh, last, last year I bulked to 190 and I was like the max. I was like so poofed out. Like, oh, and I went on a uh, cut and I looked amazing and I cut too much. And so I learned like, ah, I lost a little bit of that. So this time I want to reach 200 pounds and then I'm going to write more in here, cut to a certain, I'm not sure how I'm, what I want to cut to yet, but I'm going to cut to a certain amount of pounds and do you want to do? Do you want to do like a show or something? Or like a no, I just I, I I love the process of oh. just like fitness, and I love to I love to challenge yourself, gain muscle, and then cut and look amazing. Like I, I just love to take that's care cool. of my body, and know? that's measurable too. Two hundred pounds, obviously. Yeah. Right. All right. So here's the idea that I have for the radio station. In my office, I want to put a dry erase board. Okay. And I want everybody to write something, two, three, maybe five things from their life list up on that board. Okay. So I can ask about it from time to time. I'd be like, hey, Brandon, how are the 500 push-ups coming? Or, hey, Travis, how's the 200 pounds coming? Or something like that. Yeah. The cool thing about it is you guys can go in there and see what everybody else wrote, and maybe you can help them mark something off. Because I already said this, right? Jesse, you remember this? It's fun to make a life list. cool to mark stuff off. Game changer when you can help somebody else put their goals, dreams, and aspirations in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Can you tell I've said that before? I have. Because <laughs> it's the truth. So if you walked in there, maybe you saw Kelly wrote something up there for her life list. You're like, mm-hmm. I can help you do that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's something with photography. I, Kelly, I can help you do that. Let's go. Or maybe it's something with music. We have a new student and they're like, man, I want to make some music. And Rain was like, I, you know, I'm using this software now. I can help you do that. Yeah. That is a game changer. And then we go up there and we mark it off. Maybe we take pictures and put it up on the board too. It'll be the, you know, KXTR, the KTRL, Tarleton Public Radio, Life List Board. What do you guys think? That sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah we're going to do it. I'm down for I'm that. I'm on it. Nice. Cool. All right, let's go around one more time. We got time for one more round? We do have time for one more round. Okay. Jess? Hold on. I got to think. Um, get in with kind of like as a um, second shooter with another livestock photographer. I've talked with a equine photographer based out of Weatherford, but I haven't really like had the time to, you know, actually go to shows with her and stuff like that. So I want to. 
get in with her and probably why, why haven't you had time just with life going on and a lot and i want to wait until i get something that has a little little better quality than i have sure because oh, like my camera was made in like the 2000s so it's it's a little older but it does the job for what i need right now all right, so let me let me do this. I'm going to get on my soapbox. I'm going to pick on you just a little bit, okay? okay? You did not use this word, and I'm glad you didn't use this word, but you, I thought you were going to say, I'm just so busy, right? So when I speak, I talk about making the important things important starting with you, and one of the ways you can do that is remove busy from your vocabulary. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. It's not a busy thing. It's a priority thing. If something mm. is important enough to you, you will do it. I don't care what it is, whether it's reach out to the Weatherford photographer, go on and you know, a date, go call your mom, go on a cruise with your best friend, whatever it is. If it is important enough to you, you will do it. So when you move, remove busy from your vocabulary, you remind yourself of that because you start to pay attention how much other people say it. You start to pay attention how much you say it, right? Mm -hmm. I say ripping and running. It means the exact same thing because we all have a lot going on. Just take busy out of your vocabulary. So I'm proud of you for not using busy. But if it's important enough to you to reach out to that photographer and make that happen, you will do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now you got a life list. Now I can be like, yeah. hey, did you call that guy yet? Now I know. You <laughs> See, that's one of the bad thing about this, guys. Now I know what you guys want to accomplish. I'll ask all the time. Like, hey, did you do that thing yet? No, oh, not yet. Why not? When are you going to do it? By the end of the week? Okay. That's what makes the best friends, though, you know? Yeah. Like the friends Hold them that accountable? Do that. Yeah, let's yeah. go. For sure. All right, Brandon. Brandon's just scribbling. His his hands cramping up. He's. Right. I think you 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 <laughs> cracked Brandon. His page is almost full. This is really interesting to me. Um, one thing, I I love the way the Earth looks. Okay. I love Earth, and I want to go everywhere on the Earth. Okay. And I've let's only it, been. Let's it down a little bit. I've only been in the United States and never been outside. Okay. Um, I want to go to Japan. Cool. I want to go to Paris. Okay. I want to go to Rome. Okay. I want to see the pyramids. Okay. I want to see Stonehenge. Okay. I want to see all of all of Earth. I just, I just want to see everything. Okay. I want to experience. I don't I don't really have like besides these. I want to just explore. I want to be more open to exploring what is around me. All right. Yeah. So of those international places you just mentioned, I encourage you to prioritize them. Like if Japan is the number one thing, you need to find out how much it costs to go to Japan. Right. When's the best time to go to Japan? If you want to explore and see other things, though, I challenge you to do it in baby steps. And what I mean by that is you have a girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, one weekend, you go to a town in Texas that you've never been to. Mm. And then maybe you go to a state that you've never been to. Mm. And then you can branch out after that. You kind of get that taste of adventure, right? And maybe you go to there's a on my life list is to go to Turkey, Texas. It's in the middle of nowhere, Texas. There's a super cool hotel run by this guy named Dave Martinez, who's a singer songwriter on the Texas music scene. They bring in singer songwriters every weekend and he cooks barbecue. And I want to go. It's stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you do that and then you go a little bit further and you go a little bit further and then you end up in Japan. That's beautiful, man. That's crazy. Man, there's just so much on my list. I'm gonna pick one. Yeah, come on. Um, one of them I want to do is since like it's important now, since that I'm a junior and I'm, I'll have one more year left of college, hopefully, right? Uh, is uh, do a music video with all the fraternity brothers. I'm in Kappa Sigma. I've never seen people, m rap artists, do music videos, or I've never seen rap artists start in a fraternity. You know what I mean? So it'd be super cool for me to have a music video with all the fraternity brothers in the back doing some cool stuff. You know what I mean? I love that. That's a cool one. Yeah. That very do very doable, very measurable. Yeah. It, you, it, the relational joy component you want to do with your brothers. Love that, man. That's a yeah. great life list item. Super yeah. cool. Thanks. So the things I, I know we're winding up here, but some things I want you guys to think about and remember, okay? It's your life list. Own it. However it looks, however it feels, just make sure everything is measurable, right? Vision and action. Don't forget about the little things and take people on the adventure with you. Those are the big ones. Awesome. You know, to wrap it up today, we have a question. We do this every episode, question of the day, Drew. Um, today's question, uh, since we already made like kind of, Jot, it's, this is not like our this is not our life list yet, but it's just a bunch of ideas, a bunch of things that will probably be on your life list. So this is my life list. What is what is one thing that everybody is not wants to is going to complete within this next year that you're going to put on your life list? Okay, I like, like the this. number one thing, like the biggest thing. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm going to get mine out. I'll play this game. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. 
You first, Travis. Me first? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mine is, of course, uh, the homecoming thing. Uh, you know, this, it was like two weeks ago, homecoming, right? And I was very disappointed, uh, very disrespected by people I thought were genuine to me. And so I walked away from it. And so this upcoming year, we're going to do it differently with different people. Biggest homecoming party. I'm going to be the headliner. We're going to make it happen. Why does it have to be a homecoming? Can it be like a normal like I think it's concert I think type it, thing. I think it's, it's personal now. Sy- symbolism. <laughs> it's personal. Yeah, it's personal now. Okay, That's why. Okay. Understand. And <laughs> and here's my challenge for you. I, I realize we're still a calendar year, almost to the date of that happening. Yeah. And don't mm-hmm. wait to start making taking those action items. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Start working yeah. on that. Start planting those seeds. I dig it. That's an yeah. awesome one. I love it. Thank you, Jesse. What do you got? Um, I think mine's <clears> definitely going to be get more serious and get my business more professional, because I think now that my life is slowing down a lot more than it was, it's and once I do like get my new camera, which I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to do it around Christmas because it'll be cheaper. But <laughs> so is that the life list item is to get the camera? Yeah. Okay. That's love gonna it. Be... And that'll turn up the knob on that big overarching goal. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Get the camera. I love it. By Christmas, you even put a deadline on it. Yeah. Brandon, get a hundred thousand streams. Hundred thousand streams. Where are you at right now? Zero. Well, I'll probably have like <laughs> a few hundred, maybe. Okay. So yeah. Long way to go. So my, this is real quick. I'll tell you this story and then I'll tell you mine. My son start, started making these YouTube short things. Cool. And they're stupid, <laughs> man. They're so stupid. I love that kid. But man, some of these shorts are dumb. But <laughs> right. people are watching them now. Nice. He's like getting thousands and thousands of views. Nice, oh my God. I was like, dude, that's you batting in a baseball game. And I think you popped out to the first baseman and 2,500 people have watched that. Why? So it's not unattainable. If a 13-year-old kid can put a video up there of himself batting, dude, so don't. Don't let that number intimidate you. It's about creating content, doing it, and doing it. Okay, here's mine. I will complete my second book in the next calendar Let's year. Go. Okay, again, Let's it's go. called Stop Eating S Sandwiches. I can't say the word on the air. And it's how you talk to yourselves. We talk to ourselves. We all talk to ourselves. But the problem is we talk to ourselves in an ugly, mean, destructive way. We've yeah. got to pay attention to how we talk to ourselves. Yeah. Because you're saying mean things like, I can't do that. I'm too stupid. I can't do that. I'm too fat. I can't do that. Whatever reason. And if you say that stuff to yourself enough, you start to believe it. Yeah. So you start to remind yourself that you are worthy, that you are enough, that you are a good person, that you, you know, you do make the important things important. You start to believe that stuff instead of the BS lies. Mm -hmm. There it is. Drop the mic. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's do it. That's beautiful because I'm sure you can agree with this, Drew, but the number one person the number the f- number one doubter is yourself sometimes oh man yeah for sure yes you can be so hard on yourself sometimes and you're put limitations on yourself critic. that other people probably don't even have on you yeah, but you're limiting yourself because your one worst critic. you don't believe in yourself mm-hmm. or whatever it be so i appreciate this opportunity i really do thank you guys yeah. so much i love it thank i love a mic and love a mic in my face and just uh spreading the love and sharing inspiration getting to know you guys a little bit better i felt like i did you know going through yeah. your life list i think it's neat it was. It's a great experience, and I think everyone learned from it. I think we're gonna. I think this is gonna elevate our day. You know, we're gonna come up with more things on life list, and now technically you've structured everyone's life a little better if you think about it. Not Drew. really. So thank you so much for being on today's episode, guys. Um, this is cruising the planet. We're here every single Wednesday at 1:30 p.m. Central Time. So make sure to tune in next week. Uh, someone just commented, "Drew is the goat." No, so, oh my gosh! Yeah. Applause for Drew. They, they need to meet some more people then. <laughs> yeah, all right. But uh, make sure to follow us on our social media, uh, KXTR, one hundred point seven, The Planet. Um, Don't forget to make your own life list. And make your own life list. Hey, can I close it down like yes. I used to on my radio yeah. show? Hey, remember to make the important things important. And remember, love wins. I'm Drew Myers. See ya. Yeah. yeah.